Lots to talk about. Lots to talk about further down the results as well. And I should begin that section, I suppose, by giving you the bad news that Fernando Alonso now finishes P15. I think it's P15 or 17 or something ridiculous, something completely inconsequential in the results now. After one of, I would say, one of the greatest drives of his career, certainly as good a drive as that most of us are going to see in the next decade or so. Absolutely brilliant drive uh, because of the mirror drama that was going on, the loose mirror. And then, of course, it could have fallen off. And it was obviously it was affecting visibility, rearward visibility. But then it could have fallen off onto the track, could have been dangerous, all that stuff. And that's fine. But a 30 second penalty is quite a lot. Bearing in mind that Lance Stroll basically got a rap on the knuckles for jinking left at flat out in eighth gear and nearly causing a horrendous accident that could have taken out many cars and caused injuries. And George Russell, uh, with the tyres not yet hot, breaks ridiculously late into the hairpin, only took out Carlos Sainz, but could have taken out a lot more, including his teammate Lewis Hamilton, and also got a relative wrap on the knuckles. Compared to the penalty that's been given to Fernando, I find that absolutely astonishing. I'm interested in what you think about that. Um, and the other point I think to make is that if there was a driver of the day, I would give it unquestionably to Fernando for that drive, hitting the guardrail as hard as he did at that speed, limping back to the pits and then bringing the thing home in seventh place. Just astonishing drive. Picked it up by the scruff of the neck. And you've got to say Lewis and, and Max, too, probably deserving of that driver of the day award, if there is such a thing. Uh, anyway, the interesting thing is going to be, uh, of course, that Fernando now at the moment has to be on his best behavior because he's driving for a stroll next year. And, um, you know, he can't say, you know, haven't you ever watched any photos of video of what happened at Zolder in 82? I mean, and I was talking earlier to Nigel Roebuck. I don't suppose there are that many of us around now who were actually at Zolder in 82 when poor Gilles lost his life. Jochen Mass moved over on him. But that was the nearest thing I've seen since Zolder 82. And, and I was, I got to say, I was absolutely astonished at the quote from Stroll afterwards. I think he said something like it was just a racing accident. And here he says, unfortunately, we had contact with, we had contact with Fernando as if well, somebody else was involved there as well, not quite sure who, which was a shame. Yeah, say that again. There was a big difference in speed, yeah, and he was behind and he was catching you quickly. And I was defending, defending in a straight line when you're being caught quickly. What does that mean? I gave him plenty of room. What does that mean? Again, you know, Fernando seeing a car in a straight line, which shouldn't be moving, he's catching it. He's going to obviously, even Stroll would know what he's going to do is just pull up behind him and pull out of the toe. And Stroll moves at the last minute, at the critical millisecond when Fernando's pulling out of the toe. And, um, and he says, I gave him plenty of room left on track. So it was not as if I squeezed him against the wall. Well, I should think not. But you put him into the wall. It's probably worse, I think, than squeezing him into the wall. And the other thing I'd have to say about this is that if you look at the whole mirror thing with Fernando, yes, of course, it's great to have rear vision mirrors, but we all know actually the mirrors don't work very well anyway, which is why they're changing the regulations next year to have much better rear vision. That's the first point. Secondly, if mirrors are so important, why didn't Lance Stroll know exactly what Fernando Alonso was doing? Because if he'd been aware, would he still have turned the wheel when he did, when Fernando was just pulling out? So he wasn't using his mirrors, I guess. He was just doing it by peripheral vision feel. I would, I would suggest. And, and, and I think in the context of the fact that the accident happened because Stroll put him in the wall, I think that needs to be taken into account as well. I just think, you know, they put out the black and orange flag, is it, uh, to other cars at some point, which is, I think, why Haas put in a protest. But they didn't for Fernando. And on that basis, you can imagine the team thinking, well, you know, when the flag comes out, we will then give an instruction. But they didn't. They didn't put the flag out. And that was the argument. That was their defence. And, um, you know, Fernando just kept going as he would. So, I don't know. But to me, the whole thing was, I think that's, this is an example, I've got to say, of things not being right at the moment, because it's kind of out of all proportion. I noticed that my mate Enrico Bernaldi is one of the stewards. Um, you know, I have this running joke with Johnny Williams, who, who knows Enrique better than I do, but we both know him quite well from when he was in Formula One. And it's whenever we hear an alarm out in the street here, police siren, ambulance, whatever, oh, Enrique Bernaldi must be around. <laughs> I mean, he was 
whatever he touched collapsed, basically. Uh, so that was a bit of an irony as well. Anyway, there'll be a lot more on that, I think. And um, but I, you know, Stroll basically saying, "Well, you know, nothing to do with me, really. I gave him all the room I should." I mean, this was this was a flat out in eighth gear. I just couldn't. I can't believe he would say that. I mean, if he was saying, um, "I made a big mistake yesterday," won't happen again. And I'm very, very pleased nobody was seriously injured. I think that would be appropriate, to be honest. Um, and I come back to my other point which is, and I mentioned it on the YouTube video yesterday, that Haas, the team that protested the mirror business on the Alpine, um, did so on the basis that they said this has happened before. And obviously they've been a victim of it, I guess, and, and they got a penalty or whatever, which is why they then went back and, and, and fired back. But the driver who, the driver who did a very good job in anticipating the mayhem in front of him was Mick Schumacher, one of the Haas drivers. And he, he, you can see him braking quite hard as he sees what's happening. He's reading what's happening and he's stopping suddenly. And then down the left-hand side, as if he's got his eyes shut, is Kevin Magnussen in the other Haas. And nothing was done about that. I mean, that was unbelievably dangerous. He could have gone straight into the side of Alonso or Stroll or anybody there. And not a mention of that. And there's his team protesting Alonso. Yeah, the, the protest was upheld, fair enough. But, but why was nothing done about what Magnussen did then, the speed he was going? Talk about speed. I mean, Stroll talks about speed differential. The speed differential between, between Mick Schumacher and his teammate, I hate to think what it was. And now on the other side, Esteban Ocon was going almost as quickly and the Alpine passed Mick as well. So there's a lot of um, iniquities there. And I don't feel that comfortable about them, really, I've got to say. <laughs>